Hello again, creators. I'm going to just go over some of the equipment that I went over in yesterday's class. For those of you who just want to catch up on it a little bit more, uh, need a refresher, or for those of you who couldn't make it to class, there was only a couple. So let's take a peek here at this guy. This is made by the same company uh, that makes the H6s that we can take out that are in the cage. But this is kind of pro. Eh, this is kind of consumer. This this unit was 150 bucks. I've seen them on sale for less than that. But you know what's really good about this is it's portable, and you can put four microphones in it, and you can come out of it with four headphones, and they all have their own individual volume control, which is kind of nice to have. And the of course the inputs have their own. Uh, gain control and then there's uh, these switches here which allow you to put some phantom power on here in case you're putting in a condenser microphone right remember condenser microphones need 48 volts of power to run them dynamic microphones do not um, and then there's uh, one input here that can receive a phone and then there's another input input here that can go out to the computer. So this will actually act like an audio interface. And, and I explained in class that an audio interface is simply, it takes an analog microphone and it turns it into a digital signal so that your computer is happy. And then you can record right onto your computer if you wanted to. You could record right into a DAW. Now, the downside of something like this is that, first of all, you can only go in here with an analog input or an XLR input. Um, some of the better equipment also have a quarter-inch jack, so you could plug a guitar in here. So this is just for XLR. That's only for that connector right there, this connector right here, that guy. Um, and let me just go grab my guitar cable. And while I'm at it, I'll grab the Zoom. Should have had that ready for the video, but I didn't. So. You know, that's guitar cable, right? Quarter inch, that's a quarter inch jack. And um, this will not take that. Notice that our, the, this is the, the Zoom H6 that we use in class. Notice that, that this will. This will go in here and it will take this guy as well. So more versatile. Um, but the other downside to this guy is the preamps here. So you, you put a microphone, you're speaking into a microphone and it goes into the unit itself, but it has to be amplified. That signal is very, very low. It's like a, a less than a volt, one volt, and it has to be amplified. So inside these devices are called preamps. It's circuitry that raises that level up. And these preamps are inferior to most, and they're noisy. So you'll hear a hiss. You can get rid of that hiss in post-production, of course, as we know. But if you don't want to start with a hiss, don't buy this guy. But for the money, it is just, you know, it's something that uh, people starting out in podcasting, it's a very, very good tool for that. There's also these sound pads in here. So you could put in sound effects you know you could have the i'll just play some here i'm not playing it from this device but you know the applause and the or a beep or or you could play music so you could have up to i think it's four pre four presets here and just by hitting the pad you would play that preset then, of course, you have all your transport tools, your play and your record and your rewind and all that stuff. And the sound pad has its own little um, uh, 
volume control as well. Gain control, pardon me. So, you know, battery operated, but you can plug it into the wall here with a, um, a cable. So that's that guy. And, you know, when you compare it to these, this is more of a pro line of gear that we have at the college. And um, I won't go into this in detail because we've gone over this a, a couple of different times and I have a separate video on this guy right here. But um, here's something that's comparable to this is a Tascam. This is a Tascam DR40. And this has two inputs and looky looky, they are dual inputs so you can put uh, XLR cable, an analog mic into this, and you can also put a guitar or a keyboard or a bass uh, quarter inch jack into there as well. So that's kind of good. It's only two inputs. The, um, uh, the internal microphones are bolted on. So this isn't like this guy where this capsule will come off that capsule comes off and there's other attachments that go on here and these are bolted on the only thing you can do is reposition them this is the xy position this is the ab position and they're for slightly different purposes the xy is how a human being would hear the sound in the environment relatively accurately so um so this is a, this is a kind of a good tool, it's a useful tool. This I think I bought this for eighty dollars, and I've seen them on sale for a lot less than that. Um, I have two of them, and they do come in handy. They're they're good. Um, but after you know teaching at UML and handling this and using this, this is much more durable. The the build quality on this and this is really consumer. It's really cheap plastic. I wouldn't expect it to take a drop well, that type of thing. And, you know, there's probably probably going to break over time. But this is a good option. Let's see, what else did I show you? I showed you this guy here. This is made by Rode. And they are the company that makes the Rodecaster Pro that we had. I'm not going to do the Rodecaster Pro in this video. I'm going to do a, a separate video with just the Rodecaster Pro because it has so many bells and whistle, whistles and it's so sophisticated that it deserves its own video. And I don't want to make this one really long. And I don't have the unit up here. The Rodecaster Pro 2 is the one that we have at the college and that you can sign out. Um, and that one is, I'll probably take that home one day and do a video on that and put that up. But this is a USB microphone. So out of the box, and it has this little magnetic stand. I don't know why they did that. I guess just so you can easily take it apart, but it's kind of cool. And this moves. And you have a gain control. Oh, I'm sorry. You have a, um, uh, oh, you have a headphone volume. Why? because this is really cool it has a headphone out port right there so this goes to your laptop and if you download the proprietary free software for this nt usb mini uh, your computer will recognize four usb digital microphones, which is really cool. You can't do that with just a regular digital microphone. Um, all computers will only find one and use one at, the, at any one time. However, Rode has created a software program that will allow you to configure four <laughs> into, the, um, into their software, and then you can mix four people. So you could conceivably have four people around a table, all with headphones recording right onto your uh, laptop using the, the the recording software made by Rode. So that's a very, very useful item as well. The other thing I showed in class, it was show and tell. 
Um, this, oh, by the way, these are $100 a piece. I have three of them. And I haven't used them yet. So a student used one last semester. but And it sounded pretty good, actually. It sounded pretty good. So anyway, these guys here, this is for an analog mic. And this will go into the microphone. And then this would go into the recording device. It could be this, or it could be an, any one of the other handhelds that I was showing today, or it could be a mixing board. If this could, this this makes a microphone wireless. And these are relatively cheap. I think they come in at around a hundred dollars. They charge um, and last, I believe, four hours. So I have used these in a couple of different scenarios. I used this at a wedding for the two front vocal singers. And I have also used this in corporate settings where there's um, speakers and then question and answer at the end. And I don't want to run out. I am the usually become the runner for the question and answer segment. And I don't want to go out in between the tables and the chairs with a cable. So... I use these, and these are pretty good. As long as you are in line of sight, they don't like to transmit and receive through a lot of walls. But if you are in line of sight, these are good for about 90 feet. And uh, I tested that out in my driveway, and it does, it does work. And they're inexpensive. I mean, sure, microphone company makes very expensive wireless microphone systems. Uh, and... I'm not going to buy those. They're over 500 bucks, most of them. Uh, and you can spend a ton of money on that kind of gear. That's the low end. So for cheap money, you want a wireless mic, that's the way to go. So I guess the overall message in class was I was trying to show everyone. Oh, yeah, there's one other piece. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in the camera here. Oh, I can. It reaches. Okay, I'm using it right now. This is my daily driver on, on, in my studio, in my setup. This is sitting right over here uh, on my desk. I brought it in uh, for yesterday's class, but it has a microphone input. It also has a quarter-inch input uh, that's suitable for an instrument, like a guitar or a bass or a keyboard. And then it has a monitor output. I'm, my headphones are actually connected right here, and I have a volume control for that. There's a couple of other switches. There's a... A phantom power switch right there for 48 volts in case I use a condenser mic. This mic I'm using right now is not. It's a dynamic microphone. And then I have a line and instrument switch here, and I have uh, the ability to do a direct monitor out as well. So it's USB. It goes right into my computer. This is a traditional audio interface. It takes an analog microphone converts the signal to digital, and your computer is happy. It likes to see that. Your computer will see that focus right as an input, just like you can do that with this. This is also a computer uh, audio interface. You can come out of this and go into your computer, and it will see the Zoom H6 as an input device. Hey, guess what? So is that. Hey, guess what? So is that. These are all, uh, you have the ability to, to connect all of these to your computer and use them as an audio interface. So you can record while using them uh, and get a, another recording on your DAW as well. So again, there's kind of different levels of equipment. Um, there's consumer level, which is usually relatively uh, affordable. It's, it's cheaper. Uh, the components are not as good. And then there's prosumer, and it gets a little bit better. Um, and then there's pro. So if I had to you know, demonstrate that, I would say that this is consumer. And then this is prosumer. And then this is pro generally speaking you could i'm sure there are experts out there that will throw bombs at that all day but in general that's uh, that's how i would look at it 
So I hope this helps and I will do another video on the Rodecaster Pro. And there was a great question asked in class. Uh, um, uh, I think it was Anthony. How much can you spend on this gear? <laughs> and what's really, really good? And there are a, a ton of things out there. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a little bit of research on that myself. I didn't have walking around knowledge of that uh, yesterday. Um, I, I have a general idea, but I, 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 I didn't have any specifics. So I think I'll, I'll look into that and I'll try to do a video on that as well. So, okay. Talk to you soon.